Do you find yourself losing track of time while working on your favorite projects? Do you find it hard to deal with practical matters and chores and school while you're constantly working away at your passion in life? Do you feel like uh, you tend to singularly develop a focus on one idea or project above anything else? Is it like you find yourself lost in a translite state? where you're constantly thinking about this one idea, this one possibility over and over again in ever increasing depth and detail? Well, you might just be an INFJ and a lot of INFJs have this habit of becoming very obsessive about this one big idea or this one possibility. And the reason for this is because of uh, our dominant function introverted intuition and so this video will apply a lot to INTJs as well. Now, hi everyone. First of all, my name is Eric Thor and I've been looking at MTI for about 10 years now and I'm definitely somebody who meets the INFJ core traits of uh, getting a bit obsessed about what I do and this has been a pattern for me throughout my entire life and early childhood. I would lose myself writing down theories and philosophizing and thinking about systems and people and about humanity and politics and I would become so passionate about this that I would conflate my hobbies and my passions with my purpose and my identity. I would literally become the embodiment, uh, the sole carrier of this idea and I would do whatever necessary to shape myself, to adjust myself to uh, carry this uh, idea forward. So for me, my t I developed my skills and abilities in order to be able to further execute my ideas and to express my ideas to other people. Now, a reason why INFJs become so obsessive is because of introverted intuition. And introverted intuition is this cognitive function uh, that is high in all intuitives and all introverts and especially in intuitive, introverted and judging personality types. So what you can see with this function is you tend to kind of specialize on an abstract field of study and that means you tend to become a bit of a specialist on something that is often very novel uh, very new, so you tend to study new fields, so you tend to study uh, more abstract or more complex fields, and you tend to uh, find yourself often uh, relying on your imagination in order to study these things, so a lot of your process comes from your own subjective imagination, that means you're constantly going over in your mind and reflecting on and envisioning and visualizing something, and visualization is something very important. Uh, INFJs tend to visualize some things in extreme detail. <laughs> it's like we have imagination HD. It's we see things in our minds in such a way, in such intricate detail, and in, with such vivid colors, sounds, and uh, s visual sensory impressions uh, that um, to us these things are very, very real. And that also means when you're working away on these projects, and I noticed this when I was studying in school and so, that uh, I found myself tuning away all sounds and all sensory input from my environment. I couldn't hear or see anybody around me. I completely lost track of time. I uh, didn't notice my own uh, physical body. I didn't remember to eat on time. I didn't, uh, uh, like... Uh, uh, do anything uh, that was of a uh, sensory nature uh, because I was so lost you know in this process of writing or thinking or just going over something over and over again. Now this ability is of course something most of all positive but it is also something that can cause problems in relationships and in work because if you can't take time for work or studies in school or if you can't give people the, the love and attention they need because you're so focused, uh, that can become a problem. Like uh, listening to other people, uh, taking in their information, hearing what they say, taking their advice, uh, uh, you know, remembering things they told you and uh, following through on that, that's something that can be very difficult because uh, you think to yourself, yeah, sure, of course I'll help this person with this, so yeah, of course I'll do this, but then 
uh, you're so caught up in your ideas that you don't find the time or space or energy to do what you said you would. And this, of course, can become a big problem in relationships because uh, you have to give people time and attention, otherwise it's not the relationship. But, you know, you have, a relationship is something you create by putting in energy together with another person towards something, you know. So, uh, this can be a big problem. Similarly at work, if you're skipping out on tasks, uh, if you're not paying attention, if you're not focusing, you know, that can cause your performance to slip. If you're not studying for school or for the right subject, because so I can't uh, do this thesis or I can't hand in this paper because I'm so caught up on studying the Viking Age or learning about uh, uh, psychology or the MBTI that you can't give yourself time to hand in that paper if you do hand in that paper it's very sloppy and you can tell your energy and attention is not really in it however of course your obsessiveness can also become a great strength if you allow yourself to explore it fully and commit to it with passion and purpose so if you are able to write the thesis on your primary passion or primary hobby or if you're able to uh, put in energy and effort into your work or if you are able to become self-sufficient or uh, to start your own business doing something or if you have a place or environment where you can really dedicate yourself to your mind it's something that can really help now another thing that can really help is uh, this ability to uh, have a place where you work and the place where you can dedicate yourself to your ideas now an issue an INFJ has it and why it's so hard for an INFJ to let go is because uh, when you are working on something, when you are putting yourself into an idea, well, your imagination will follow you around wherever you go. So no matter if you're at work or in school or out for a walk, your imagination is right there, your idea is right inside. So you can keep working at it when you're sleeping, when you're about to go to sleep, when you're out, when you're at parties. No matter where you go, you can basically go back into that space whenever you like. Uh, so it's hard to tune out of it. It's hard to set it aside and to focus on other matters. Uh, but what really does help is getting closure. So what I usually work with and what is very important to me is give myself time to finish an idea or a task and before I start upon something else or start working with something. That means, okay, if I really want to think about something or if I'm working on something or trying to work on something, like now I'm trying to develop a relationship database and I'm going over how different personnel types mesh with each other. If I'm doing that and I'm working on a table and I'm setting up and thinking of concepts for all these uh, different uh, relationship types, yeah, then I can't go and think, okay, now I have to start on dinner and then I have to do a cleaning and then I have to, uh, do the laundry. No, then you first think, okay, I'm just gonna finish this part of the table or this row and then I'm gonna go on and do that other task. So give yourself closure is something very important. If you don't give yourself closure or deny yourself closure, uh, your obsessiveness is going to uh, become more obsessive. That means uh, uh, when something is not finished, that's very difficult for a judging type. Judging types can't handle lack of closure. So they keep going over something until they have it. So that's something to think about. Get yourself closer intellectually. Uh, so conclude your thoughts and uh, force yourself to conclude tasks. So set point for yourself. And this is easier for INTJs, I know this. INTJs are pretty good at setting targets and saying, okay, I'm just gonna write this much or today I'm gonna finish this chapter and today I'm gonna start on this part and I'm gonna need this much time to that and I'm gonna need this much time to that. So. Just if you're able to do that, that can really help uh, uh, deal with things. So now, another thing that an INFJ will work with, and this is of course because we have extorted feeling, is of course guilt towards other people. And guilt can be an effective way of uh, snapping yourself out of your mind, uh, certainly. Uh, but I do warn against it, so you can have that sense of, oh, I should be doing more for other people, or oh, my sister needs help with a project, or my... My uh, girlfriend needs this from me or my parents need this from me. So it's if you find yourself in that state, well, you can constantly become everybody's butler. You can constantly take on other people's work and tasks and try to help other people to do things. And that can really keep you from uh, really excelling in your work or in your ideas. So uh, be careful that you don't let guilt control you or 
uh, that you don't use guilt as a way of whipping yourself into uh, dealing with practical matters or work because um, guilt is only so effective, you know, negative reinforcement is only so effective. Uh, so try to work with uh, positive reinforcement as well. So in that way, you know, if you can uh, take care of practical matters first and feel that you've taken care of it, you've uh, finished cooking or baking or you've cleaned out your surfaces and you've cleaned your room and you've organized your space or you've done taken care of uh, bills or taxes or appointments. So now you have time to do it. So instead of working in something and then feeling guilty about not doing things for other people, go do something first and work through that and uh, then as a reward because you did it give yourself time to uh, yourself to uh, work through what you really enjoy doing and what you're most passionate about and if you do that it's going to feel a lot easier and you're going to feel a lot lighter because you're going to be able to work with that without any stress or without any feeling that you missed something or forgotten about something or you let somebody down uh, so that's also something very important now uh, beyond that, I would say there are some do's and don'ts when it comes to your primary obsession and I would say uh, I learned pretty early on that you can't uh, shape yourself to become the perfect representative of your idea. That means you can't uh, uh, change yourself or change fundamental parts of yourself in order to better represent this idea. Uh, you can't uh, uh, push yourself to the point where you starve yourself of your personal needs or energy or if you don't feed yourself or if you don't uh, uh, Give yourself, you know that basic level of comfort and uh, if you don't love yourself to have relationships or connections That's because that's a big danger. You know, I see a lot of INFJs. They isolate themselves from other people They deny themselves friendship relationships because they think they don't have the time for it. And that's not true you do have the time for it and it can be something positive and something that helps you in your goals. In fact, I find that INFJs that are isolated in working towards their ideas often tend to lack the energy to really put their ideas out there. So in times when I was uh, stressing myself or pushing myself too hard, my ideas also started to become more hollow. I noticed my quality was dropping. I noticed that I was too exhausted to really think as big as I could. But if I had the time to hang out with friends or uh, with people I loved, or if I uh, got the chance to go out on a walk, or if I uh, was able to uh, do something fun with other people, uh, then I had a lot more energy and I could really put myself more into my ideas and I could also do more with it. So you're not gonna get there faster uh, by denying yourself what you need in order to be succeed. So give yourself what you need to succeed and recognize that you have human needs, <laughs> you know, you have uh, emotional needs, you have physical needs, and uh, those things can only help you uh, achieve more in life. They're not there to keep you from succeeding in life. And you can't uh, rewire yourself to the point where you don't need to sleep or where you don't need to eat or where you don't need to have anybody in your life in order to succeed. Um, it's not gonna work. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Anyways, that's INFJ obsessiveness for you. And if you are obsessed about something, let me know in the comments down below. What are you most obsessed about? What is your primary hobby or passion in life? What is it that is both your primary interest, your primary passion, and your key purpose in life? What is it that gives you a feeling of, this is me, this is what I want, this is what I love? Thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video.